You've worked hard in AP Chemistry all school year. Now it's time to prove what you know on the AP Chem exam. There's just one problem. If you don't know the format and the rules for the exam ahead of time, you won't score up to your potential. Hi there. My name is Jeremy Krug. I've been teaching AP Chemistry for 24 years. And here's everything you need to know about the AP Chemistry exam. Let's start with the rules you have to follow on the day of your AP exam. Make sure you know when and where you'll take your exam and get there early. If you arrive late, there's a good chance you won't be allowed in. When you arrive, you'll be assigned a seat. You aren't allowed to choose your own. You need to bring two sharpened number two pencils and you can bring two pens. You should bring your scientific calculator with a full charge or fresh batteries. You can also bring a second calculator as a backup. You should wear a digital watch so you can keep track of time as you take the exam. There are several items you should not bring to the exam. Do not bring your cell phone, computing device, a smartwatch, or any cameras. Don't bring any food, snacks, or drinks. No water bottles. Don't bring any scratch paper or highlighters to the exam. And make sure your watch and calculator won't be making any noise during the exam. Speaking of calculators, pretty much any standard issue scientific or graphing calculator that you would use in your chemistry class is okay to use on the AP exam. Just a couple of exceptions. Calculators that have a QWERTY or typewriter style keyboard, like the TI-92, are not allowed. And calculators aren't allowed to communicate with each other, either through the internet or infrared ports. You can use any programs that you might have stored in your calculator. You're not required to clear your calculator's memory before the exam. You can use your calculator during the entire exam. You'll also have access to the AP Chemistry Equation Packet during the entire exam. It has this periodic table. It has the symbols of the elements, their atomic numbers, and atomic masses, but it doesn't have the names. It also has two pages worth of equations, constants, and abbreviations that you can refer to at any time during the exam if you need to. And just so you know, if you have to use the restroom during the exam, you are allowed to do so, as long as you go alone. Now, let's focus in on section one, which is the multiple choice part of the AP exam. Section 1 has 60 multiple choice questions with four answer choices each. Each of the questions has one best answer. You'll have space in the question booklet to work out any problems that you need to, but all your answers must be bubbled on the answer sheet with a number 2 pencil. You'll have 90 minutes to answer the 60 questions. Most of the questions are standalone questions, where there's a question and then four answer choices. However, you'll also see several item sets where there are four choices labeled A through D, and then a graph or experiment or data set, and then you'll have several questions that use these same four choices through the item set. When you see these, remember that it is possible to use one of the answer choices more than once. Make sure to answer every multiple choice question and don't leave any blank. Your score is based solely on the number of questions you answer correctly. So if you have no idea about a question, your best bet is to take a guess and move on. The multiple choice section is worth exactly half of your AP score. After the multiple choice section, you'll have a short break where you can use the restroom, get a drink of water, but you won't be allowed to go visit your chemistry classroom or go ask your teacher any questions about the exam. You also can't access the internet, cell phones, or any other devices during the break. Section 2 is the free response section. Here, you'll see three long questions worth 10 points each, followed by four shorter questions worth four points each. The free response section is worth exactly half of your AP score, and you'll be given one hour and 45 minutes for this part. That seems like a lot of time, but it goes by fast so you'll want to gauge your time with a digital watch. The three long questions may be based on one general scenario or topic, but different parts of the question will draw from various units of the course. So part A might be about equilibrium, 
part B might be over intermolecular forces. Part C might be over thermodynamics. These are rapid fire questions from various parts of the course. Don't spend more than about 20 minutes on any one of these long questions. Each of the four shorter questions usually focuses on one or two units, so they may seem more focused, but they're also worth only four points each. Don't spend more than about eight or nine minutes on any of these uh, shorter free responses. A few things you need to know about the free response section. Always show your work. On a problem that involves computation, if you don't show your work, you won't get any credit. Always give your answer with appropriate units. Remember, in science, a measurement is meaningless unless it has a unit. And if the question asks you to use a specific unit like joules or kilojoules, make sure you use that unit and not something else. Of course, there are a few exceptions like equilibrium constants. Give your answer with an appropriate number of significant figures. For most problems, this will be either two or three significant figures. When calculating, avoid rounding off too much before you give your final answer. Uh, instead, round off only at the end of a problem. Remember that on the AP exam, you are not penalized for carry-through errors. That means that if you calculate part A incorrectly, and you use your answer from part A to calculate parts B and C, you still get full credit for those later answers as long as everything else is right. So if you aren't sure about an early part of the question, that's okay. Don't give up. You can still do great on the question. When writing an essay, be specific and answer the question. If the question says to explain your answer, that means you have to use complete sentences to say why you gave the answer you did. Write clearly. Be careful with your use of pronouns. If you say it, make sure you're very clear what it is. And of course, write legibly. Make sure you read every part of every question and answer as many as you possibly can. Whatever you do, do not leave entire questions blank. This will kill your chances of a good score. If you've done even a little bit of preparation, you'll find several parts of an FRQ that you can answer. Each long FRQ is worth right around 12% of your entire AP exam score. So answer as many questions as you can and don't leave things blank. Now, if you think you need some more preparation and review, take a look at my quick review videos for every AP Chemistry unit and my 101 video complete AP Chem course. I'm also proud to be the new content creator for the AP Chemistry Ultimate Review Packet. Over the next several weeks, I'll be adding study guides, answers, and full practice exams. It's just $24.99, so go check it out over at ultimatereviewpacket.com. After you finish the exam, you'll be released from the exam room and you'll be able to take a deep breath and relax. Two days after the exam, the free response questions will probably be posted on the College Board website. And sometime in early July, you'll be able to access your score online. So I hope you feel more comfortable with the format of the AP Chemistry exam and how it works. Keep practicing, and if you learned something from this video, leave a like and a comment down below if you're so inclined. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.